is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering One Piece, episodes 100 and 101. In these episodes, we are still in the desert, and we are hearing about Vivi's childhood and friends, and her dad is a lot goofier than I expected, (laughs) and some of her friends are not as true as they used to be. Welcome to one's... Wait, wait, wait. Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. And I'm Gabriela. Gabriela is here to join me today. Woo! Yay! <sighs> Woo! <laughs> so, always I have to ask, why these episodes? A couple of reasons. Um, one is, Ace is my favorite non-Straw Hat. Right, fair. So I had yep. so I had to like be present and this was like the first episode I was able to join with Ace still around. So I bring little Ace to the show. Oh my god, he's so cute. Guys, right? those of you who can't aren't in the chat, she's holding up a little pop doll. Portgas D Ace, by the way, which his brother's name is Monkey. What does Portgas mean? Does it mean it's anything? His name. It's his name. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that it didn't, like, also mean monkey, but, like, in another language or, you know what I mean? It's because even their middle initial is the same. So, I was like, maybe maybe this is something. But Just his name. That's okay. All, that's just his name. So, <laughs> that is, the fact that he is here and one of your favorite non-straw hats is one of the reasons. One of the and what was the second reason? Well, we're at episode 100. Yeah, I know. What better spot to do a little bit of a check-in, see how you're feeling, how the show is going, where the plot's going, talk about a little bit of the... I should mention, too, that the two episodes previous to this are filler episodes. Yes. So I was told to skip those, but I did watch them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, sometimes when people see the feed, they're like, well, you skipped one. I don't think you uploaded... I." Well, I was told to skip them, so it's not there. So don't come yelling at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I understand too why they were filler episodes. They weren't like actually that bad. I know no, that it's not just... really considered that they're bad every time, but I always go into it sort of expecting that maybe they're going to suck. And so far, the filler episodes have been pretty fun. I've enjoyed them anyway. Um, but. We won't talk about that. All right. So. <laughs> I mean, you can talk about them. The, the, these episodes are rather light as well. So if you want to talk about the fillers, we can talk about them. The fillers are entertaining. That's the thing. One Piece is good at doing entertaining fillers. They're yeah. just, like, they're not, I just don't feel like they're worth spending an entire hour talking about Yeah, them. that's totally fair. <laughs> um, well, and, and the ones that... It, <laughs> So I'm trying to remember because out of the two of them, I'm getting them sort of like mushed together the way that they went. But one of them had a lot to do with this group of dudes who were pretending to defend this town when really they were just like bleeding them dry of supplies Mm -hmm. and not planning on helping to keep them safe at all. And I misunderstood the way that episode ended. And so... The way that goes is that Vivi basically is like, I don't want to go and just teach these guys a lesson. I want to see if they can be redeemed. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Um, Which, fine. It's sort of a weird, like, I don't mind it as the story device, but it is like a weird thing out of nowhere for Vivi to suddenly just be like, no, 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 we're not going to do, well, let's see if we can turn this around and get them to have like a sudden awakening of the heart, which is basically what she calls it later. Mm -hmm. But after it looks like that has happened and they're like 
riding away on the camel, we get the flashback of the kid who we later find out is Koza, who isn't the guy that they just walked away from. But the way that it's intercut with her saying, like, I, you know, I think they've had a change of heart. And I thought what the episode was saying was she gave him a chance because she used to know him. And Mm -hmm. that, like, she recognized the guy and was like, wait, just give him a chance. I know he's decent and he'll turn around. So when it ends with, like, the flashback of the kid walking away being like, I hope you grow up to be a great princess. I was like, oh, she knew him? Is that what that is? And then it turns out, no. Koza's like a totally different person. So it makes it even weirder, I guess, that she gave him a chance because she doesn't know him. You know? I think she just, I think she just has a lot of faith in her people. So it's really yeah. like wanted to make sure that like they're fighting for the people. Like Let's defend the city, but for the real reasons, right? Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that, too, she's just kind of sick of everything being, like, taking people down, you know? I could see how you just start to get, like, so discouraged just Mm -hmm. trying to, like, bust up corruption everywhere you go and being like, well, can't you just, like, be a better person? That would be really (laughs) great, actually, if we could just do that. Like, like, poor baby, she's traveling through the desert, trying to stop a rebellion, trying to stop whatever's going on. She's like, just just give me a break. You'll be good so that I can go move on and do other things. <laughs> I hadn't really realized when we start off going through the desert, like the point of this is going to be stopping at different towns and Vivi checking in and seeing what's been going on since she left and everything. Um, and I feel like it's actually been pretty effective you know, going from one place to the other and just her memories of what, like, what she knew about the place last time she visited it. And that winds up being a major sore point in this episode. Is it this one? No, it's one of the filler episodes with the girl who uh, who waited for mm-hmm. Vivi and her dad. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that was the one thing I was like, I'm glad I don't have to talk about this because I didn't buy that at all. That's she's like, (laughs) it's a really long drawn out scene of her like collapsing and crying on the sand. And then Vivi also crying and collapsing on the sand. And meanwhile, I'm just like, (sighs) all right, sure. I guess. Um, so, all right. That's in our past. Now we are going into, the present day with more fighting over water. They, like every meal. That's that's what Vivi and Navi just say. Just every meal. Yep. This must be so tiresome. <laughs> this makes me think of like if you have a bunch of cats or dogs and you have to feed them at the same time and they just get really like rough with one another, bouncing each other out of the way to get to the dish. You know, like that's what Luffy feels like to me is like a big stupid dog that just comes in and is like, give me the plate, give me the plate. And it's just like, <laughs> there's, it, there's plenty. Stop it. Um, and here he's like wasting water, which as somebody who can be very anxious about like planning ahead and making sure things are in place, it's only a cartoon, but watching him waste water is stressful. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> I get that. Um, so we get our flashback here to the first time that we meet Kuz, it's Kuzo, right? Am I saying? Kosa. Kosa. Okay. Thank you. And he has come to the court to yell at the king and his dad apparently like either didn't know he was coming or the kid just got away from him. But his dad is really flipped out when he uh, comes running in at, because the kid is just like, Hey, what the fuck to the King? He's very like direct and intense with it. Mm -hmm. And the poor dad comes running in and it's like, Oh my God, please. I'll, I'll take his punishment, whatever it is. I was like, Oh man. It's, it's, it's very much I feel like like I feel like every parent can relate to Toto no. in that moment when it's like just just 
This is why I don't have kids, man. When I your can't. children just run away from you and it's like <sighs> find out that they're doing some wacky shit. And like you know, to be fair, Vivi's dad is like a very calm and rational, level headed person. And he doesn't hold this against the kid at all. Even later on, him and his daughter get in a fight. And I feel like most fathers, if a boy who just came in and threw you attitude leaves and then beats the shit out of your daughter, most <laughs> dudes are going to be mad about that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to be like, good for him for not being mad. But a little part of me is kind of like, I mean, you could be a little mad about it. It would be fine. Like, <laughs> kids will be I'm just, kids type of thing. <laughs> I guess. So, this this leads to him being like a big friend of hers, even though he is a commoner. And mm-hmm. the two of them, there's like a sequence of moments that I found so good. They grow to be sort of close and she's like going to his house fairly frequently. And it turns out, what's the name of the, uh, me, 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 that Igaram. guy? Igaram. Igaram is spying on her to make sure that she's okay. And her dad tags along, even though he was told not to do that. And their, like, big disguise is to just carry a tree over their heads. (laughs) And the king has, like, a hang... Like, he has, like, a housewife's kerchief on his head, but tied in, like, under his nose. That is very anime trope. Like, whatever, like... What is that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's like a handkerchief tied around your face. It's kind of like one of those, like, gag robbers. Like, they do that a lot when, like, an old man is trying to sneak around or, like, That's when, so like when, or when somebody's trying to, like, rob something, but it's, like, it's supposed to be funny and not, like, actually, like, stealing things. Like, it's it's, it's an anime gag completely. Okay, so, Just okay, I, I think I'm getting it. So, normally, if you're going to be a robber and you're using a, a handkerchief, you tie it with the large triangle part over your face. Are, is it supposed to be like, look at what an idiot he is? He doesn't even know the right way to tie this handkerchief, so he did that, it backward? That's how I've always understood it in anime. It's just like tied it around here. Like, it's like, okay, the okay. But yeah, they do it a lot in a lot of animes and everything. That's just one of those anime trope things. I'm okay. I, I, I feel better about that. I feel like that makes sense, and I can accept that because the joke internally especially if it's a thing that crops up all the time because in this show i never know if this is just like well you know oda's a weirdo (laughs) he'll make a guy's epaulets made out of swans for no reason like i don't know what's him and what's anime no this this is definitely anime but yes no that's a weirdo i mean come on we have a guy with gigantic corals trying to sneak under a tree like that's it's so good. And they're like hunched over and creeping. Have you ever played Skyrim? I have a long time ago. I just started playing like two days ago. Probably a not great idea since I'm trying to be a little bit more active to start a video game right now. But nevertheless, I was walking around town in the game from fir- mm-hmm. like I was in first person perspective. And I am not a gamer at all (laughs) guys just it's very stressful to watch me play because i don't know where i'm going i don't know how to get my weapon out it's very chaotic so i'm walking around and i i'm i like lean over to owen because i'm on my switch and i'm like why am i so low to the ground and he's like oh you're crouching (laughs) i had been in a crouch for like an hour walking around this town like so the way that they're walking and they're carrying the little tree is like what I imagine basically my character had been doing the entire time. And I had no idea. Uh, oh, Ryan says that's the anime version of a thief mask. Like they use that instead of a ski cap face mask for some reason. It's why. Okay. You know, I accept it. Yeah. Good to um, know. But one of my favorite parts of that scene is the dialogue. 
how like, hey, Vivi, are you going to stay for dinner? Yeah, thank you. And then Igaram, are you staying? Oh, that's right. I forgot because he's acting like they can't see him, but then immediately acknowledges like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. I know that you can see me. I'm still going to keep crouching and carrying my tree. But uh, he said, Don't and he dinner, like, didn't know then... the king was there. He turns around and it's like, what are you doing here? And yells at him. <laughs> these two it's no surprise that she almost gets abducted oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very homey like that entire environment like the little girl runs away from the palace to go hang out with all the kids in the dirt and whatever and, like, what are they the sand sand clan sand sand I can't remember oh, what the, the sand, name of their the little sand sand clan yeah okay, that's the name of cool. their little group club whatever the sand sand clan okay and uh, yeah, that like fight that she got in was to see who was going to be the leader. And he beats her, but he gives her like an honorary title, kind of the vice to, like, captain. Yeah, um, which is generous of him. I won't lie; he didn't have to do that. Yeah. Um, it is a little galling though that the the fight like we go into it knowing that she lost because she says that up front to her dad when we see her but when we then flash back to the start of the fight he is mocking her because she's a girl and i was like oh man i hate that he's like saying this shit and i know that she does indeed lose <laughs> I don't want, I want her to like, you know, like make a case for us ladies. And no, I know that she's going to, and it's fine. She's like a princess. I don't, uh, yeah, the kid from yeah, the street like, is definitely going to beat the princess. It's fine. But, you know. <laughs> it's a cute dynamic between the two, like besties, little best friends growing up together type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this. Um. So yeah, she's on her way home and there are these two uh, scoundrels who turn up and are basically like, hey, little girl, we're going to take you with us. And it's not like we don't want to hurt you. We're just going to ransom you. And these kids decide that they are going to defend her and... I already forgot it again. Caro? The kid. Oh, Kosa. Kosa. Why am I so bad at that? Kosa. He is... He declares, like, you know, defend her with your lives. Give your life if you, if need be, basically. Which fucks her up. Mm-hmm. I feel like it would also fuck me up. Like, how would you react to this? Yeah. Because it's, it's one of those, like, I don't want people, to, like, it's, like, I can relate to that. I feel like it's also very similar to Nami's of, I don't want other people to get hurt because of me. Like, that mm -hmm. internalized guilt. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Yeah. Not going to be, like, I shouldn't say you're not going to be a good queen, because that's just very harsh. But if you aren't prepared for people to die for you you're going to have a hard time as queen because that's literally everybody's job. That's the point of like your guards and servants and whatnot is that they're supposed to lay down their lives to protect you. So while I understand that the practical nature of being like, Oh, her life is more important than yours, which is basically what that boils down to is fucked up. And you don't want to subscribe to that value system. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't want to subscribe to that value system, then how about you give away all of your possessions and stop being a queen? Because that is already, your life is already considered more important than theirs. Just by virtue of like your position and how you live versus how they live. So I was just like, as much as I understand her dad being like, proud of her selflessness here i also kind of wanted him to be like look i really appreciate you having this like tender heart but you're gonna have to start understanding that this is how it works a little bit 
I think like at this like based on like all of her actions so far, you could get an idea from Bibi that she's very much the I am the princess, so it's my duty to protect my people. Which is I mean, it's what she's been doing the entire time that she's been on the show. She Yeah, it's just it is her but like that's your duty the if you if you are going to take that seriously and that is your position like as a figurehead then you have to understand that people are going to be throwing themselves in front of you to protect you as the leader i just it feels like even now she doesn't want to accept that that's how it works and i i know that that is being played as a sort of like virtue and i understand that especially for a kids show but there is a part of me that is just like all right, well, you're going to have to learn how to reconcile that, my friend, because it's, I don't know how you're going to do anything if you're always just like, yeah, but I'm not actually better and more important than them. Everything that you're going to do is going to be predicated on the assumption that you are more important and better than them. That's like, that's the nature of monarchy. That's just how it goes. So I just want her to like, I, I want that to be simultaneously held as a virtue but also for her to get a little bit of a like slap across the face like wake up okay this is it this is how it goes do you get me you know yeah I mean? no i get that I, I completely agree i do think that bb probably needs a little bit of a reality dose but you know <laughs> but right now she's just still very much in that I'm very, she's just, it's the same, I like to compare her a lot with Nami, just because she's the only other, like, strong female character that we really have. <laughs> um, yeah. It, Nami was the same way, where she was trying to do everything herself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So I think, yeah, Bibi's sort of similar in that regard. So these dudes try and uh, kidnap her. Mm-hmm. And these kids attack. Um, It's pretty, like, amusing because they sneak up on these two guys who genuinely are just like, wait, there's a crowd of children here? No way. And they chuck these kids around. They are very uh, large men. Extremely large, wide men. (laughs) And... um, this is sort of like one of the first points when you basically get like, you're worth more because they're like, well, we don't want to hurt you. We want, a, we want hostage money, but these kids aren't worth anything. So we will fuck them up if that's how it's going to be. And uh, he winds up like stepping right in front of her and just, I won't let you have her. And they have a knockdown drag out fight that he eventually wins. And I this does somebody like step in right at the end here? I feel like somebody comes oh no, you know what? It's uh it's her dad and um Mimi man. <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna remember everybody's names. I'm sorry, everyone. I mean Egram's gone, so all right. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, her dad goes up to one of the guys who tried to abduct her and just kicks the shit out of him while the man is like unconscious on the ground. It is pretty funny, to be honest. I think that what I enjoy about her dad is like how up till now they've shown him as this extremely regal, restrained dude. And then in this episode, we get him completely losing his mind on this dude as he kicks the hell out of him and we get the kerchief tied in front of his nose hiding under a tree so there's like two moments of real silliness and like undignified behavior from him Mm -hmm. which i feel like contrasts really well considering that everything else we've seen from him has been extremely kingly tm Mm -hmm. you know what is her dad's name cobra Oh, that's right. He's King Cobra. Oh my King god. Cobra. I hate it. Okay. 
Sure. <laughs> it's it's all with the theme, you know. We're in the mm -hmm. desert, and you've seen the style of some of the buildings already. So of course, he's yeah. King Cobra. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, sure. It's this thing. We need the guy who's about to like betray him to be mongoose or something. <laughs> <laughs> they eat snakes, right? Isn't that like a thing? Uh, so that that is basically everything with Vivi this episode. Uh, and and the kid winds up being like given his father, I should say, is given all of the like supplies and status to start their own town. Yep. Which is wild. And uh, the kid is like offered to stay in the capital, but he really wants to be hands on with it. So he's mm -hmm. going with the guy, with his dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's this like very optimistic sort of goodbye. But because it's being told by a very sad Vivi, I'm like, yeah, this isn't going anywhere good, obviously. <laughs> See, as, so this is the part where I want to do a check-in with you on the main plot. Because okay. right now we just, like, as you said, like, we just met Kosa. Mm -hmm. And who is not just her childhood friend. He's supposed to be the leader, right? Right. Of the rebellion. So you have right. him living with his dad to create this oasis type of place. Because they show it to you a little bit on, the, like, the map, right? That it's supposed to be, like right in that intersection, so everybody's going to come in, and it's going to be like, it's it's supposed to be this A city. metropolis kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. And, like, how do we get there from, how do we get from that point of King Cobra putting all of his support into this place to... So, you know, yeah. this, what I, this is actually something that I wanted to ask you, is, so we have Crocodile, right? Yes. Crocodile's not Koza, though. They're no. not the same person. No, okay. Not, yeah, well, you've, you've seen Crocodile and you've seen Little Koza. Like, it's... Yeah, but I don't know enough. Of, like, uh, who knows what they'll do in anime with aging somebody? You know, like, he has a scar on his face. That, I don't know. But um, is... Because the whole way that this is sort of set up, Vivi was talking about how crocodile has like lied to the rebellion about his intentions and like helping them to um break free from the king allegedly for like to their benefit but really he is planning his own coup once they have done that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so koza's being played by crocodile is that right yes i mean because they, cause they remember when they were talking about the powder and the water mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how, like, they had been using the powder to take away water from one place, which is what happened with, I'm checking, Erumalu, the city that we saw in the last... Look at you having notes. I should have notes. I have notes. <laughs> I should do that. I don't do that. I just watch and then just hope you guys will tell me shit in the comments. Yeah, so... It's it's the idea like Alubarna, the capital, it's good. And then mm -hmm. you have places like Arumalu and all of the other people that you've been meeting in the desert. Right. That are not doing well. Um so, so Crocodile framed the king in order to get people like Koza to turn against him. So that's worked, evidently, if Koza's the leader of the rebellion. Right? It's, it's, is that uh, it's how it, it appears says, yeah. to be? Yeah. Um, I'm not mad at him. That's the thing. It's like, Vivi is just like, you know, it's the same little boy. And I'm like, well, shit seems like it got pretty bleak, Vivi. Like, there's a point at which personal loyalty is going to be trumped by watching all of your people slowly starving to death around you because you mm -hmm. can't grow any food. So, yeah, I'm sure it's very tragic. 
don't get me wrong that your like childhood friend is now like literally scheming against you but also i'm not i'm not mad at him for it it seems like that's what a leader has to do right yeah he's he, like he's fighting for his people yeah and he was basically like he starts off rebelling he comes in and yells at the king like do you fucking give a shit or not mm-hmm. so this was clearly just in his blood to begin with just what do they say i was about to say talk to the but talk to the hand but no speaking truth to power that's the one there you go <laughs> <laughs> Wow, talk to the hand. Could not be further off on that. Um, yeah, I, I I really wonder what his dad is doing. If his dad is still alive. I feel like his dad would be really like not approving of this at all. That rebellious child just never stops yelling at the king. You know? His dad was like running in there being like, please punish me instead. I feel like he wouldn't really have that same energy with this though. Just like, I know my kid's leading a rebellion against you, but if you could just punish me and leave him out of it, I'd really appreciate it. Um, there's a whole other thing going on this episode as well with a scorpion, a giant scorpion in the desert that everybody beats up and they wind up eating later. I mean... It's, everything is food for Luffy. Like yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot the, in the in the filler episodes when the dude is talking about eating the camel, and instead of being horrified, Luffy's like, "What? You could eat it?" <laughs> that response really got me. I shouldn't be surprised by it because, like, that's priority number one for Luffy. Is it edible? So of course that's his reaction. But I wasn't. He just seems so irritated that he hadn't thought of that and given it a try. I mean, his first instinct when he met Chopper was to try to eat him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor I'm not going to forgive Chopper. him for that. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> I mean, you did spend it, like, like 10 like, minutes watching them run around trying oh, to test It's so the long. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, it was so much time. I can't. That is like... After this, I will be covering the next episode of Full Metal Alchemist. And um, it's just really remarkable to watch the difference in the way that action is done it's, between these two shows. It's like it's night and day. It's completely different. Honestly, like, yeah. I, I could get into a ridiculous long discussion about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and the difference with One Piece. Like, it's just. <laughs> Can you do any of that without spoilers? Or does it all have to be spoiler talk? Um, because I'm interested to hear, like, you know, for those who are listening to both shows, they seem to overlap in the fandom a lot. It's because it's the it's the it's the, it's the medium. Like both of them are shunning, so it's very okay. most geared towards the same group, to the same age group. So what an, does so that mean? Shonen means young young adult. Like it's a teen story, teen okay, specifically cool. boys story. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so we've everybody who likes that specific style, and that's what we watch, like all of the boy shows type of thing, right? Um, What's uh, the other style name? Oh well, there there is like four different things. Like there is the there is shonen, which is for boys. There is shoujo, which is for girls, which is the magical girl stuff, like Sailor Moon. Gotcha. Cool. And then you have love the, that aesthetic. Yeah, and then you have the the adult versions of this so if one piece showed us a lot more like blood in the fights and a lot more like adult themes then it would be like she's saying and okay then women's stories which is very much like like adult stories so something they, they tend to be a little bit more realistic in a way they're just okay. so those are the four demographics thank you sorry i was forgetting the <laughs> <laughs> So those are the, first, the main target demographics. So that's one of the main similarities between One Piece and Full Metal. And that's why a lot of the same people have watched it. Okay, gotcha. Actually, a lot more people have probably... Like, One Piece tends to fall behind just because of the... It's so long, I don't want to start it. It's just, just, 
I mean, it is very intimidating. I I could see because I came into this without really knowing anything about it, except for the fact that every time I mentioned it to anybody that you guys were commissioning it, people reacted in complete disbelief because they were like, you will be covering that for the next seven years. What? And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. That's what they're doing. Um, But otherwise, I didn't know anything about it. And now that I'm in it a little bit more, I feel like I... I'm glad I didn't know because it's got the same sort of like overwhelming feeling because of how much there is as entering into like reading Mm Spider-Man, like the comic, you know, there's so much Spider-Man comic. How, where do you even like begin with this? Do you really want to go all the way to the beginning? Do you have to, you know? Um, So, yeah, I mean, I understand. I understand that. (laughs) people being worried about that but I, I, but i think the biggest like the biggest similarity that i can see is a lot of the themes and i won't get into details on that because but it's just spe- specifically this arc for example okay like this arc it's very similar in themes to full metal alchemist okay um then but differences there is just it's like the, the one of the core themes in Full Metal Alchemist, and this is definitely not a spoiler since you already watched the first two episodes. It's the family theme, right? While in while One Piece is really more about found family. Yeah, it's still family, but it's like a whole different dynamic of looking at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But, and then there's, I mean, there's obviously all of the animation, and then there's the pace. Um, Oda is very, very much about the long game. Yeah. And intense absurdity. Clearly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I but truly has, just want to know what he does to come up with these outfits. I uh, he, it's the creativity that he come that he has for this like it's just baffling. And then this of is... course he doesn't have creativity because he tends to draw every single woman the same way. But <laughs> true, God, that is so wild. So, isn't but it? then he dresses them completely differently. So at least you have balance there. I I could see it being like I'm going to design a new character. So he just tapes a bunch of really crazy like characters from comics and cartoons all their images to the wall and just throws darts and whatever it lands on he's just like yeah i'll put that in okay yeah that's what his face looks like just because that things don't go together a lot of the time you know Mm -hmm. it's that's the thing that i have the most trouble with whenever i'm like i'll be playing like one of those stupid phone games where you're like redecorating a room you know that kind of thing And even in something that's that inconsequential, I still can't resist the impulse to make things match, to make them go. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm very much the same way. Like, everything. I don't know. It feels... Even even when I'm doing, like, a character on, like, a video game, like, Mm -hmm. World of Warcraft, like, it's just, like, everything has to fit together. Oh, I've gained a lot of different um, weapons and outfits and whatever. I'm gonna go to the. I'm I'm gonna go and like modify them so they all match again. Ah, like, uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> can't just have it all. Do. I don't care how much money I spend on it. Whatever. Internet. Every day when I go on to fucking Animal Crossing, I go to the shop, I find new accessories, and then I go and like make an outfit. And sometimes the hat is like the wrong shade of blue. And uh, I'm like, nope, can't do it. Can't yeah, have this hat. No. It's not the right blue. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and really Oda am. is out here just like, I. What is wrong with you? He's so free. I want to be free. I'm in. Um, I'm in this little prison. <laughs> I mean, when you have characters like, I mean, all of the fishmen, <laughs> Mister Two. Ah, oh, Mister Two. God. <laughs> Mister, honestly, and Mister Three. With oh, the, the, the three, three being lit, <laughs> like that is is, and the fishman with the lips, that guy is so good. What mm-hmm. a wild! And to have him be like the tough one, 
when he looks like a Backstreet Boy. Mm -hmm. Inspired, truly. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, anyway, That's, okay. But you realize that the main characters are the most, the most mild side. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because, like, I'm tempted oftentimes to see that as, like, well, they have to be drawn the most frequently. So you want to make them the simplest. But I don't actually think that's what it's about, right? I think because, like, if you're going to be adding bonkers character designs with every person they bump into anywhere, then you're still drawing intricate stuff for all of your scenes. So I don't know. I might be, like... I think it's probably just to be the contrast between these, you know, like higher stakes characters versus our baseline crew, our main crew, you know? Yeah. But I mean, although we did have uh Vivi and Nami walking around in their dancers outfits the past I, couple episodes. I, I can't defend that. I mean, I just, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's, that's a, like I can defend a lot of things about Ola, but that's that's probably one that's like I'm just, 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 just gonna move past that one. It's it's it's, it's gonna, not it's, even the the outfits that bother me because honestly it was fun and I really do enjoy Sanji being on the ground going in a circle just saying how sexy they are and sorry he is there on. But Nami's tits grow three sizes when she's in that outfit. And then she, when she's in her regular clothes, they just go back to B cups. It's just a completely different body that she's got when she's wearing that outfit. And I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm... It's, it's a spoiler, but I don't care. But I am unfortunately, like, Nami's, Nami's breasts just... just that one doesn't change. <laughs> the, Noted. The, the, the size and the... Yeah. Yeah, that's... That is sadly something that's... Noted. Yeah. Okay. Well, what can you do? But... I, but... Like, I, I want to see more of, like, Zoro's abs, then. Or uh, Zoro's... Zoro's probably got one of those, like, uh, V's... You know the V that real muscular dudes get, right? Let's, like the, uh, I think I think Bernadette very much agrees with you on this. <laughs> I feel like if we get some close ups of the my uh my friend my gay friend, he used to call the that V the cum gutter. Forgive me everybody. <laughs> but that's what he used to call it. And so that's always how I think of it. But yeah, that's if fantastic. we're gonna get big titties in our face, I would also appreciate some close-ups of the cum gutters as well oh, and no. biceps. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, this is the part where I say like we have Ace half naked for his entire appearance, pretty much. True. And I still don't feel like it's enough. But I feel like <laughs> <laughs> this is me gushing about Ace now. It's we're getting <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, Ace just like he's so he feels like such a dude that I've known that I I like his personality winds up being a lot better than those guys, but I yeah. still can't work up any sort of like actual attraction. I'm just like, uh, this dude. It's it's the older it's the, it's the older brother vibe for me. It's the okay. it's the yes, we're both ridiculous because we like we're we're siblings, we're both ridiculous, but at least Ace has the maturity of being the older. <laughs> Let me ask you something, and I don't normally want a real answer to this sort of thing because it's a spoiler. Okay, but this is something that I want at least just just a yes or no. Okay. Do we ever learn anything about Luffy's parents, and like at all? Yes. Okay. Okay, because it's just weird to me that his brother shows up, and I'm thinking that's the opening to talking about Luffy's past, that this is going to be the opening of the door, and we're going to – never comes up. They barely even talk to each other, and when they do, it's not like they're ever like they, – they reminisce about, like, 
the pranks they pulled on one another and stuff, but they never talk about like their family at all, which <laughs> it's wild to me that we still don't know anything about where Luffy comes from. I, is like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to, I was about to start theorizing and there's no point because I'm just working from pure nothing. So. I, I mean, we all like theories, so we'll take it. But. That <laughs> like, all I can think of is that gold Roger is his dad. And, or is it Gold Roger? It's Gold Roger, right? I got that right. Is that the name? The One Piece yes, pirate I'm, man? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I should... Uh, yes, Gold Roger. Let's, let's stick to Gold Roger. <laughs> what I, I, what I was, was that? I was trying to correct pronunciation, but no, let's go with Gold Roger. Why? What was... How... I just couldn't. Rem- I just cannot remember the the change of pronunciation if it happens when in the, which episode it happens. So I didn't want to like. Oh, okay. But I don't yeah, remember I don't... where it is. In I don't remember where it is in the series. So that's let's just ignore me. And I am very sorry to everybody listening to me right now. And let's just <laughs> stick to Gold Roger. <laughs> All right. Well. If I were going to be like, who is his parent? That's the only person that I can think of that would like matter as of right now, because we've been hearing about that guy from the beginning. And there's been weird hints and things that maybe he's like still alive after, all. you know, like there's been the occasional bit of weirdness, but I just, I like, for me, it doesn't have to be that. I feel like the it, there are a lot of people who fall into the sort of camp like people did with Star Wars, where I was going to be raised up parents, Star Wars. I was gonna yeah, be Star Wars. like everybody needs raised parents to be of the lineage, and I didn't want that personally. I wanted her to be a nobody because that was for me the beauty of how the Force works is that it can come to anybody, and you don't have to be of a dynasty, you know. Um, so. For me, Luffy's dad and mom, they don't have to be significant in the overall story for me to be happy with it. That's not a prerequisite. But because of how this stuff tends to go with these stories, that's the guess that I would make is that it would be somebody, you know, mm-hmm. that, but that's his dad. And as for his mother, genuinely no idea. Like, honestly, I have a harder time imagining his mother existing at all. Luffy feels like more likely to have sprung fully formed from the ground than to have a human mother. I don't see it. He's just. (laughs) No, I don't see it. I I don't know. I mean, Luffy was just born from chaos. That's that's it. Right. Yeah. He has no parents. He was just born from chaos. (laughs) <laughs> honestly yeah and it's funny that like ace can still carry that same energy even though he is so much better behaved than luffy which gets commented on a I mean, lot a few a few years at sea already in the grand line fighting bad guys yeah no i feel like he's that's- uh gotten sobered up a little bit yeah I don't know, though. I don't see that that will happen for Luffy. I don't know. I mean, the Ace, like, it's not really a spoiler because they already mentioned it. This the fact that Ace, I mean, he's not even a captain. He works, he's, yeah. under, a diff- he's under a different crew. So that's, that tells you also a little bit about, like. He, yeah. Hmm. A humbling uh, aspect, the fact that he's choosing not to be his own captain. Yeah. I mean, honestly, though, everybody asking you all the time what to do, I wouldn't want that either. Like, this is the thing. Okay, just real quick aside. As you all know, I got married last month and I had to plan not only the wedding, but like the week before all of the gathering for me and friends who came to Florida. And I wasn't ready for this to be such a difficult thing, but all day, every day, everyone would ask me, so what are we doing? So what time do we have to be there? So where are we going for dinner? So who's getting the lift? 
So who's paying for this? Every question for anything came to me and it was so exhausting. And if I was given the option to be like, you're going to go after this bastard who killed one of our guys, or you're going to stay here and manage these pirates. I would a hundred percent rather go off by myself and track down the bad pirate man. You know, mm -hmm. I just personally, any, any time. Thank you. Like being in charge always sounds like it's appealing in a general way, especially if you're a control freak like me, <laughs> but then it's in practice. It's too much, man. This is why I don't want to have kids because kids all day asking you shit. Ugh, yeah. Kill me. I mean, unless you're Luffy and then Luffy is like, everybody else handle all their responsibilities. I'm just going to be Pirate King. You know what you make it, you, you that's true. I'm acting I'm I'm talking like I'm going to be a responsible captain, but you could be a captain like Luffy and not give any fucks about that. Exactly. I guess, yeah. Ah, oh, Luffy. Yeah. Um so okay, yeah, these guys they, I I have to mention this from the last episodes, the uh the filler ones too. Mm -hmm. Cuz when they're fighting the scorpion it just reminded me Ace fights another is it a scorpion or it's like a beetle it's like a beetle that comes up out of the ground and it's like smoking on the ground behind him and he turns around and there's a lizard standing there and the lizard's like mimicking him like stepping in his path every time he tries to get around him and eventually ace turns up riding towards the town on the lizard's back I would like to register my deep regret that this lizard is no longer part of our crew because I was really hoping <laughs> this was a permanent addition. He has his little hands that he holds like this, like the lizard's little hands are so <laughs> limp and loose, like they like a T-Rex, you know, I love these lizards that come and, and the little frilly ones that are carrying the messages with their little like bow tie things <laughs> i love these lizards very happy with that but see, but you have lashes in the crew that's true but lashes is a pervert yes yes so you know like maybe i want a wholesome animal and not a uh it's really something that even chopper's a boy can't even have Chopper be a girl. Like, come on. <laughs> Aren't you glad that we have Bibi around to keep Nami company? I mean, I am, but like, I, I've started to lose patience with Vivi. So I'm just like, well, I don't want it to just be Nami that I'm consistently like, yeah, right. Yes. Listen to her. But starting to slide back toward that again. Uh. Um. All right. So th we, we went through pretty much all of episode 100. Mm -hmm. So then we get into the um, the episode with the inventor man. It's one hundred and one. It's a by the way. It's a half filler. It's one oh of the, okay. Yeah. The only thing in that entire episode that it's like canon, like manga, it's a saying goodbye. <laughs> oh shit! Really? <laughs> yeah. Everything oh, else is just anime filler. Okay, noted. Yeah, when, it's a it has a weird energy, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for those who don't remember, this episode it it's told in a sort of like disjointed way, where the first thing that we see is this dude like spying on our crew of people from a like spire that he lives on in his tent with his pet ostrich named like popper what is his name it says I the p i do not remember the name of the ostrich. Ugh, i can't I took remember less notes on this one because <laughs> that's fine yeah i do not remember um, the name of the ostrich that i um, i just really enjoy everybody having animal sidekicks all the time i don't get tired of that um but yeah, so he is, he spots Ace and recognizes him. And I didn't remember, like, if we saw the guy that Ace is searching for. So I was sort of thinking that maybe this dude was 
Blackbeard? Is that the one that, that Ace is after? Ace is looking for Blackbeard, yes. Okay. So I was like, maybe this is the guy. He doesn't have a black beard. But frequently, people's names have nothing to do with how they look. So who knows? Or he dyed it. Or I don't know. But he sees Ace and his reaction is very like, oh, that's perfect. And I was like, that's sort of weird. Like, what does that even mean? And he has a sort of bazooka that he's about to fire at the rock that Ace is sitting on. And as that's happening, we go to our crew who are making dinner and fighting over food yet again. And Luffy is looking at this piece of anime meat with the little bone sticking out of the middle. And it just starts to float in the air. And you can hear these little kids whispering. And it turns out they are, they, they ask if they, if Ace can help track down this man. And they don't say it initially that this is their dad. They make it sound like this dude wronged us. So please track him down for us is like the vibe and he the kid offers to pay like a million berries but what i'm gonna do that he does not have yeah <laughs> he offers it and then it's just like i i eventually yeah okay i'll pay so. you this much money but at some point later in my life when i have it maybe. that's genuinely how i try to live that's why my credit card debt has gotten a little bit shaky after this uh honeymoon i just took mm -hmm. but what can you do? And it, it just kept, like, I kept thinking that there was this long-standing feud between this man and Ace. And it just isn't anything. This guy purely wants to fight Ace to prove to his sons that he's not a loser. Like, it's framed as, I want to teach you to always go for your dreams but what it feels like to me is see your old man still got it it feels like a midlife crisis a little bit yeah. you know what i mean yeah completely it's just the guy who just has i don't know they live in the desert alone and eating guess, potatoes yeah but look at how big the potatoes were it was not a big potato at all <laughs> It was actually a rather small potato. <laughs> <laughs> the poor kid says, I wonder what it's like to eat till your tummy is full. And his brother is like, shut the fuck up. I was like, oh my God, relax. But yeah, so he's like talking about leaving one day and doing something different. And his brother's basically like, we're going to stay here and we're going to do the same bullshit that our dad does. And don't get your hopes up for anything else because you have to listen to dad and realize that's not going to happen. And it was sort of weird because he framed it as if his dad is the one drilling it into their heads that this isn't realistic. But the second that their dad overhears them talking like this, he seems horrified. So I'm sort of wondering what it is, what gave his oldest son the impression that he was going to be like, no, you're going to stay here and become a moisture farmer like your uncle Owen, you know, like, what, where did, where did he even get that? Because the, the dad doesn't seem to feel that way at all. I don't know. Um, like, yeah, we see them harvesting potatoes together, but that's what you have to do to live. So I feel like this, what I'm saying is, I think the older brother, he is so cynical somehow, <laughs> and he's projecting that onto their dad. And that never came from their dad. That's that little boy was born cynical and he needs therapy. Hard so to get therapy that's in the middle I come of to the rest on that. I would imagine. You have to talk to lizards. <laughs> <laughs> who knows maybe the lizards are really good therapists they seem i mean they do they seem pretty fun the one 
when when Ace looks at the one and says, "Do you want to get in my way, bud?" and the lizard just starts crying. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but man, every time that this show has animals start crying, I can't handle it. It's too sad. Even when the animal is the bad guy, I can't, like, you know, it's like that adorable uh, evil cow sea monster that the fishmen owned. Well, yeah. Just, <laughs> poor sad eyes made me so sad, you guys. Well, Just best. remind me, does that... Does that monster get away, or does that monster wind up being killed by... If I remember correctly, they just run away. Okay, good. I I'm might just going to imagine it cavorting out in the sea, enjoying itself. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Living a happy life somewhere. Yeah, there exactly. Um, <laughs> Ryan says there is so much crying in One Piece. There really is. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but I, like, was, like, impressed by them including men crying in one of the first episodes because you just don't get the depiction of men crying often in media in general. And I was not prepared for how frequently this was going to be a thing at all. There's a lot of healthy masculinity in One Piece, which I appreciate. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, it's, uh, like, there's definitely moments of, intense badassery but mm -hmm. the, they're always like balanced out you know it never feels toxic particularly mm -hmm. i mean even sanji with his annoying pervasoid tendencies uh he isn't ever like awful with the, the women in the show about it you know it doesn't he he's like annoying like a gnat but he's mm -hmm. not like pushy toward them you know there's yeah, nothing like, about him that feels force, like yeah he doesn't force yeah. them he doesn't actually like does anything like there's a line to his pervertedness in a way yeah mm -hmm. and even ace when he gets introduced and he has this like i'm gonna swagger away slowly into the sunset and then somebody yells out the door how he didn't pay his bill and he just like goes Wah! and runs i just really <laughs> enjoy that every time we get yeah. a moment of somebody being cut down a little bit i like it Ace introduction is one of my favorite anime introductions. Just the way that he's just chilling there, falling asleep mm -hmm. with his I just love it. I'm like I really I have to assume we'll see him again because the show is so long and he's Luffy, he's like related to Luffy, so I bet he'll turn up again. But I am surprised that by the end of this episode he's saying goodbye already. They haven't gotten anywhere yet you know it feels like you the natural place to break off would be once you reach the capital and he can like restock on supplies and go off on his way equipped to be by himself do you know what i mean but fire. He, he's made out of fire so he can he doesn't really get as affected by the heat as but i mean you need water you need food like if, if that's just bodily requirements, I would imagine. I bet he needs even more food because of his uh, burning off the fuel in his body faster. Perhaps I don't know him and Luffy. He can probably he can probably like fly out with. I mean, not fly, fly, but like you know how he had his little vote where he like accelerated with the fire. No, when, when was he, that? When he did, when he destroyed the Baroque work ships earlier, like that was in his introduction. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that whole scene. Yeah. So it's sort of like a rocket. Yeah, so he can propel himself. I guess. It so, just, look, I, I am a, I am somebody who likes to plan ahead. And for me, I'm going to wait until I get to a city to restock before I go off on my own. It's just, yeah. but you know what? I believe it character-wise that Ace wouldn't care about that. Okay, That's he's very fair. much like, all right, I'm done. I don't have my information. Nice seeing you, Luffy. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> so that, like, I forgot to mention that he wants to talk to this guy because there's a rumor that this dude beat up Blackbeard, mm -hmm. right? Is that, yep. is that what it is? So he's, like, 
trying to find this dude to get information about where Blackbird, Blackbird, Blackbeard could be today. <clears throat> and then finds out that this guy like completely made that up. Mm-hmm. Which honestly, I gotta be like a little impressed with the fact that this guy just made shit up and it traveled that far. Mm-hmm. That this guy's got like a reputation now. Like, that's the kind of thing where you want to hire that man to manage your marketing on social media because evidently <laughs> he just knows how to get it out there and get people paying attention. Um, well, yeah, that's true. Um, Ryan says Ryan, that, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, Ryan says that um, Ace leaves much earlier in the manga. And that is true. Like he doesn't travel in the desert. They just see each other in the oh. town and then he leaves. That's, really fast Mm -hmm. wow i feel like i would be so irritated by that as a reader for him to just pop up and then bounce again that quick but also i just really want to know about luffy's past so i think that's part of it as well as me just being like but come on that was supposed to be the thing where now you give me the information i wanted all right he leaves to continue his quest yeah and this dude eventually, like, he's fighting Ace, and he is getting his ass handed to him, and he keeps pulling out more and more ridiculous shit to keep fighting. And one of the things he pulls out is a an extinguisher, but it's, like, very high pressure. So it goes, like, right through the rock and stuff. But it's supposed to cope with Ace's fire ability. Which is smart. Honestly, that's, like, a good thought. But the poor dude is being absolutely laid out. And in front of his kids, thinking that, like, yeah, I'm going to prove something by, like, dying at this man's hands in front of my children. And finally, his kids, like... They drape themselves over him to stop him fighting. And they, I think the youngest one says, I'm sorry for what I said. I promise we'll be good from now on. And basically the, the way that he says that makes me think that he sees his father like engaging in this fight as like punishment to him specifically for what he said in his father's hearing. So I was really grateful that that was what made the dad stop and suddenly like burst into tears and hug his kids because I was like, oh my God, when it's like put that way, it's a lot sadder, you know, these kids being like, we just want our dad back. Just come home. We're sorry. Like they hold, they are taking responsibility for driving him over the edge so that now he has to do this thing. Sir, what what do you what were you gonna do? You're gonna leave your two kids alone? They don't have a mother, apparently, from what we've seen. So you were just gonna what orphan them, and that was you doing a good thing in your mind. Okay, sure, go ahead. He doesn't. No, he stops fighting. But he's an idiot. Yeah. So that's that episode. <laughs> like I said, it was like I said, it's a very it's a filler episode. The, that, that one is really more about you know, just giving you the last oh yeah, Ace needs to leave at some point. Right. <laughs> so giving you the information in that oh yeah, he has to go continue pursuing Blackbeard and then there's a the goodbye and all the nice moments with the crew of like, please take care of my baby bro because he's ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> I do love at one point they like get separated again and Luffy calls Ace a flake. (laughs) And uh, I don't have siblings, so I can't speak to this with like any authority. But I imagine that's something that happens all the time is that siblings will call one another out for the, the character defect that they themselves have in spades also. But they don't seem to see. I mean, that's just a very human thing anyway. But I feel like with siblings, it would probably be a lot worse. Yeah. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have two sisters. Okay. Yeah. So is that a thing? There is a lot of, um, I think, 
one of my sisters has the other on her phone, just like like her nickname on the phone. It's Ugly Butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but I think it's just because of how like basic it is. That's not even a clever insult. Just ugly no, no. butt. <laughs> and then she just goes, "Hey Siri, call ugly butt." Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I w- I wish that I like had that kind of relationship with somebody that I'm friends with. But anybody that I am friends with, if I changed their name in my phone to ugly butt and they found out about it, they would genuinely be like, what the fuck, Natasha? Yeah. They would not find it cute. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's very terrible. Sometimes, sometimes I just do that. Sometimes, like, I'm upstairs, they're downstairs in the kitchen or whatever, and I just, like, hey, and I'm like, yeah, what? You're ugly. That's the <laughs> <laughs> <a> conversation. <laughs> my god that is uh, i i don't know how i don't think i think i was meant to be an only child i, think that's, <laughs> I, I don't think i could have done it that's, uh, that's like psychological warfare it is <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh yeah. my god sibling okay. dynamics are fun it's like i love you but i hate you mm. <laughs> yeah i guess because like You know, I think all of us have that with our parents a lot of the time as well. It's just like, no, I really love you. But also, oh, my God, fucking stop. So if I had that same type of relationship but with somebody who is more of a peer instead of an authority figure, I guess that is sort of how it would wind up manifesting. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so funny, though. I definitely, if I ever write a novel where there's siblings, I will credit you at the end of the book (laughs) and i will put a call from downstairs what you're ugly exchange in the book because that's just good no man to take no worries (laughs) Um, but no eh, that's that's just luffy calling ace out and yeah and ace in turn gives him a piece of paper Oh, I forgot that he does that. What did we see? What's on that in this episode? Nothing. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. There's nothing on it. It's a piece of paper. And then Luffy's like, "What is this? Is it important?" Yeah. All right. Does he eat it? Sounds like something that he'd eat. <laughs> I can see. Saying. Luffy. I can see Luffy eating it. Yeah. No. Nibbling on the edges at the very least to see. Well, I mean, they're stuck into this. There, they're gonna get hungry. Paper, I guess, is good food. Yeah. Ugh. You know, I'm just realizing that I'm wanting Luffy's backstory, but I don't really know how much Luffy knows about his own backstory either. Like, does he know who his parents are? Hmm. Never occurred to me that he might not know because I'm just trying to think what could be on that paper. Is it a treasure map? Is it a map to the parents? Parent map? Is it a picture of him as a baby with his mommy? It's Ace's signature. <laughs> Ace is famous and he can just sell it. Because he's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I know your fan, little bro. Autograph this for you. Yeah, see? Um... I'm trying to think because, like, we're pretty much done with the capping of those two. Is there anything yeah. else that you wanted to talk about? I mean, like, like I said, I wanted to do like a check in where we were, like, how you were doing, how are the characters, like. I mean, I'm that. really enjoying myself. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I uh, am working on trying to get Candace to watch the show. Yes, um, Candace. For those who don't know, handles all of the like spreadsheet tracking and creating of events on crowdcast and whatnot for spoil me and she's a major weeb 
but never watched One Piece because she found the fandom too hardcore and intense about like, no, you have to see it. You have to watch it. And she was just like, you know what? No, yeah. you're pushing too hard. I don't want to now, you know? She wrote it off and I like the past few times I've watched, I've screenshotted some of the weirder characters and sent them <laughs> as a text and been like, can you just please watch this fucking show? And I think I'm wearing her down. Yes. I think I'm getting her. Yeah. Cause there's a couple that she has reacted with like, are you kidding me? What is, what does this even mean? And I'm like, I can't tell you that you have to watch it. She should, she can even go ahead with you so that she can like be the one teasing you about it. Oh my God. Don't do that. She Come would on, Candace, If you're listening, please. I hope that catch, she does go back and listen. To, catch up to us. And then help us tease Natasha about all she the stuff she's missing watch, out. She watches uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, so she's been in on those re- that recording. Yeah, and, um, I, you know, but yeah, I want her. I want her to get on. And she has. Uh, she's been seeing somebody who is a fan, and apparently she mentioned to him that I'm trying to get her to watch it, and so now he's constantly asking her. So when are we going to start One Piece? Hey, so do you want to start watching One Piece? So I think he's if we. Attack from both sides. Eventually, we'll get her to do it. I just Good. have to bide my time. It, one Piece is one of those, like, everybody's hesitant at the beginning. And yes, us fans are, like, a little bit crazy. And we get a little bit too intense at times. But it's worth it. It's just so worth it. Um, I just really understand with how weird this show is, too. Feeling like, I can't talk to you about it. You have to have actually seen it. It's not mm-hmm. something that I can discuss, you know? Like, there are some shows where you can describe to a person the the broad strokes, and this just, no, no that's this not going to work. <laughs> it's, we've, like, in, um, I mean, a couple of other groups, and we've done the, what would be the one manga panel from One Piece that you could show somebody to try to get them hooked? And everybody has different ideas. Mm-hmm. But none of them actually, like, do the trick. Because yeah. One Piece is just, like, all, from what you've seen only, it's like, you, ha- you have a good, like, season one is a nice character study, right? Mm-hmm. It's just getting to know your crew, getting to know your new family type of thing, and setting off into an adventure. It's very much a book one on any fantasy series. Yeah. And then I mean, book, that's what yeah. I want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then book two, uh, you get into the world building aspect of it, mm-hmm. and you're only you're only there, but you're already getting to see a little bit of like some of the other themes that they do when it comes to like the polit- the politics of it, and mm-hmm. some of the um, oh, that does a lot of social commentary. And there is okay, a se- cool. There's a there's a, there's, a, there's a section of the fandom who refuses to acknowledge it because they're just stupid. Of course, but yeah. But so, Oda it's like the people a- who got mad at me for like speaking out against Trump on hi- my Harry Potter episodes. How like dare how, literally? You? How are you a, a Harry Potter fan and yeah. voting for Trump? Like what? Yeah, actually, that's one of the things that I'm very much looking forward to um, when like you discussing the show. It's because mm-hmm. you do tend to do a lot of like political commentary and a lot of like social justice type of um, mm-hmm. tangents, for lack of a better word, but. Honestly. No, that's fine. That's, I'll own <laughs> but it. That's but we, I love true. your tangents. Um, we're in the middle of a tangent right now. But, that's true. <laughs> but um, so once, and Oda does that a lot. Oda does use a lot of like the cool adventure themes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to give you a nice, like, something that often gets overlooked in real life. So I'm very excited for that's you cool. to get there and catch on to that. Yeah. And it all starts and this season. <laughs> Does it? Okay. It's a little bit, yeah. I uh I don't I, I'm just realizing like I don't know if there's so so I did you send me or maybe Florian sent me a picture of like the planet that this is on so that you no, that I could that see was like me. Yeah. Okay. And they're in the grand line and as far as I remember, there wasn't another like area of the planet that was 
weird for them to aim for, right? Like what I'm trying to think of is, are they just staying in the grand line for the remainder of the run? Is it, is it, we have the first thing for our, to gather our crew and the character study to get to know them. We get into the grand line and then that's the series is in the grand line. You can't tell me that. I can't tell you that. I can tell you that the, the the world is very much already pretty much like the already have an idea. You have your different seas, all divided by right. two things: the main, um, the red line, which is the main continent, mm-hmm. which is just the big wall of Earth that you see when you're entering before on the on the lagoon arc or the, the whale arc. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I forgot about that because they have to go up like it's a yeah. Yeah, you have, I forgot you all have about that, that big piece of land just covering all around, and then um, perpendicular to it, you have the Grand Line. Okay, and that's where we are right now. Man, I want to like I, I, I'm afraid to like spoil myself, but I want to look up the planet again and and look at it while you're describing this. I mean, you, you can just like if you go, if you can oh. open this story, I can. Sh- you have the image, and that's probably the most known spoilery image that I could find. <laughs> okay, cool. Yep. Because <laughs> it doesn't have any of the names or anything, and, and it does show you both also the calm belt, which is the one that's surrounding the Grand Line. Right. Okay. All right. Even, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a weird way for this planet to work. It's. I don't know. And this is the shit that I like. This is what I mean when I'm talking about, like, clearly this dude is just freer than me mentally. Because he's, like, literally just, well, my planet is just going to do what I decide. Yeah. And I'm out here trying to act like I have to be bound by the forces that all planets are bound by. Why? Why do I have to do that? I don't. I could do literally whatever if I invent a planet. Mm -hmm. But I would still just fall within certain boundaries because I don't have the imagination to break past that. And it's tragic. I just, I'm looking at this map. What? What? Yeah. Why not though? Like, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. How strange. <laughs> um. All right. But yeah, I mean, like in terms of a check-in, I mean, I'm I'm having a great time. I'm really enjoying, and especially now that I'm starting like Full Metal Alchemist, contrasting the way that the two of them are done is fascinating. As somebody yeah. who isn't familiar with anime, it's just really interesting. Like, I especially after I watched the next episode that I'm covering before I watched these episodes, mm-hmm. and. It was really startling once I went back to One Piece, how much it feels like manga pages. There's just like a lot of moments in it feel like panels. Mm-hmm. Like they are animated, they're they're moving, but barely. And it really feels almost like a completely still image. And th- that's not a bad thing. It's just a really different approach. It's also the, you know it's I mean? also the year. Um because the season that you're watching right now, I think that's so. I think when did it, did Alabasta come out? Like 2001, 2002. Okay, somewhere around that, probably. Um, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That's uh, 2006, 2007. So okay, it's a good few years later, and animation by then had completely changed. You're going to see the animation of One Piece just changing with the times as well. It doesn't okay, in the that'll be now. fun. Cool. Um, so that's something, yeah. Like, um, for example, I can tell you that the current season, it is one of the most absolute gorgeous animations that I've ever seen in any in any show. Ooh. Like, cool. Any show. It's just the color and the way. It's just, just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, but that's, I mean, <laughs> episode a thousand and whatever, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brotherhood 2009. Thank you. I knew, I knew it was, I, I, I didn't think it was when I was in college. Whatever. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Boy, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, I don't know if you guys had seen, but I covered, and I can't remember the writer's name, but I covered um, two films, Your Name 
and weathering with you, which are anime mm-hmm. also, and some of the yep. most beautiful animation I've ever seen in my life. It is the kind of, like I want to pause it, screenshot it, and use it as my like backdrop mm-hmm. on my fucking my computer. It's just so gorgeous. So yeah, sometimes you could just get your socks knocked off, um, but it's not like necessary. It's appreciated, but you know I don't for. One piece, it feels like right now, the style goes with the absurdity very well. Mm -hmm. You know, you let the action be much more minimalist so that the bonkers costume is what is taking up most of the screen time and attention. And that totally makes sense to me as a balance. But I am really interested to see how, if as the animation changes, like costumes change, if at all, because... I'm I'm just very interested to see the like evolution of this. This will definitely be the longest running thing I've ever covered. Yeah, I mean Nami's costume changes. <laughs> oh, I mean that. <laughs> Why is it just her? None of the other boys. They all are wearing the same thing. Because all the she time. likes clothes. Didn't you see? You remember when she went to the store in um, That's true. Loke Town that she just loves. And she clothes? tries everything on and then just fucking leaves and leaves yeah. it all piled up. Yeah. Nami is so rude. I love her. It's a buzz. She's a buzz. Oh, um, I I did a quick look up and I can tell you, um, it's for Gold Roger. It's Gold D Roger. It's not gold, Roger. Oh. But I, I couldn't See? remember if you had already gone through, but yes, Kureha, our lovely, our lovely, ba- our lovely badass witch from Drum Island. I forgot about him. that. Gold so there's D, the Roger. D. What's going on? They're related. Something's up. Might not be his dad. <laughs> Might be like his grandpa. It's probably his dad. Might be his brother. Maybe it's Luffy. Maybe there's a time travel thing. Ooh, wouldn't that be neat? <laughs> Time travel in one piece. Because, you know, of course, like, pirate adventures are not enough. Let's add time yeah. travel. If he put time travel in this show, I would just shrug and be like, okay, we're doing this now. Like, it what, would not bother me at all. What would be the craziest thing that they could add in this show that you would be like, no, I can't. I'm done. I think if they went really far with, like, something, like, super dark like you know the kind of thing where it would be like okay tonally this is actually incredibly like messed up kind of thing you know like if we went too far in a direction of something like song of ice and fire you know where there's like a greek (laughs) character for example i would just be like okay pump the brakes what is this reek thing we're not doing this i don't approve at all um because there, there's some, there's times we're doing something really ridiculous will undercut the creepiness or the disturbing nature of something and it'll keep it absurd and mm-hmm. and you are you know and then there are times where if you try to add absurdity to something disturbing it makes it more disturbing it just sort of underlines it and points it out and I feel like that's what would happen if you went dark enough with certain things on this show. It would start to become like nightmarish, you know, because this so, this show dances along the edge of nightmarish mm-hmm. here and there with its character designs and stuff. So it would only take a nudge to really start getting into like Alice in Wonderland territory where I'm just like, uh-uh, no, I don't like this at all. But for the record, everybody, I don't like Alice in Wonderland. It creeps me out real bad. Even as a little girl, I was like, I'm not watching that. So, yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to mention before we wrap up? No, nope, that's that's it. Just just happy to be here. Happy to Yay! Chat up. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and thank you guys again very much for listening. I hope that you've been enjoying the coverage. Next episode is Tuesday the 11th. So be there or be square. And uh, also I will be starting the next um, Full Metal Alchemist in about 45 minutes. So be here for that as well. Um, is there anything of yours that you want to plug? I don't know if you have any projects or anything, but no, I no, was trying I to ask that. I have a very quiet life. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I just like to give that, that stage for a moment if you need it. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me again. Thank you for having me. And until next time, everybody. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, everybody. Spoiled Network Podcast.